Hi everybody. Today we're going to do a Turk's Head bracelet and as you can see here I've got a pink and grey paracord Turk's Head bracelet and I've also got myself a bracelet made from natural fibre. This is cotton cord. And on this one I've got three passes all in the same colour and you'll see on this one I've used two passes of pink and one pass of grey. Both are made in exactly the same way, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do this one here just because it's slightly different, that's all. So yeah, so what we've got is we've got our two different bracelets here, both made in exactly the same way, except on this, the left one here, I am going to show you how to just put a different colour in as well. Okay, so let's get on and start making our paracord bracelets. And once again, don't forget, at the end of the video, I will put measurements in so you know exactly what size to choose for your hand. Okay, and once again, if you enjoy the video, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. But please tell me why so that I know. And I promise I do answer all comments. Okay, so see you on the other side. Let's get knotting. So what I've done is, I have got myself a length of paracord. Don't worry about the lengths, what you require, etc. Because I will put that at the end of the video. And I'll give you a rough idea of how to measure it so that you can measure it yourself. Right, so what I've got is, I've got my paracord here. Pink, only because I'm trying to get rid of this colour. I had it for one job and I just can't get rid of it. And on the other end, I've got myself a lacing needle you do for this job you do not need a lacing nice for this job you do not need a lacing needle see i can speak but it helps okay so i'm going to put the net lacing needle out of the way and i'm going to go over here and get my standing end of my paracord and the first thing i do is i place the paracord in the palm of my hand like so at about the widest point now the reason that we're working at the widest point is simply for the fact is that when it's made we want to be able to slip this paracord over our wrists or hands and so it ends up on our wrists like so. So we need a bit of a gap and so what we do is when we tie this we basically tie it quite slack and then later on we can go around and tighten it up a little bit so it's just a little bit more of a snug fit. This one doesn't have a buckle at all, and so therefore it's a slip over Turk's head as such. Okay, so here we go. I have my standing end, and what I basically do is I place the standing end over a fairly wide part. You can keep your fingers spread apart like so, just to give you that extra width. And I take my working end and pass it round the back of my paracord like so. So it's crossing over at that point. So there we go, it's gone round the back, come back and crossed over at that point. And then the next thing I do is basically hold that crossing point, take the paracord round the back of my hand again. Okay, so it's running parallel to this one here, comes round the back and the next thing we want to do is, right, so it's coming around the back here. So the next thing we want to do is, now that we're around the back, is we want to go over the top of that one and over the, underneath that standing end there. That's the standing end. So we're going over, under. And so what I'll do is just get my lacing needle and we're going over, under. Whoop, if I can actually pass it through. And what I'll do is I'll just hold it there to lock it in position like so and then there we have it so now as you can see it's gone over under and we're now at that position and what I'm going to do is just keep my thumb like that there just to keep it out of the way and the next thing we're going to do is we are going to with these two leads here we pass the left one underneath the right one like so so pass it underneath like so. So as you can see now, that left one is crossing over underneath that right one. And it's gone to that position there. 
And the next thing I do is I just put my finger there to keep that gap and I can then just bring that working end into play there and pass it through that gap. Okay, so passed it through that gap like so. There we go. And I'll just pull those leads just a bit, take that slack out. Don't want it coming undone anywhere. Just check it, make sure your working end's not coming undone or your standing end. Okay, so now where I have gone over under at that point there, if we go down a little bit further, you can see we've got a natural crossing point here. And what I'll do is I'll just move that crossing point up a bit. So it's naturally crossing over there. So the next thing we want to do is I want to pass my working end over that one, under that one. Okay, so that's easy enough. So we go over, under, and pull through the excess. Get that kink out. We don't want any kinks in there. Okay, get that kink out. And what I'm going to do is just put it around the back of my thumb just to hold it out of the way. So the working end is now going around the back of my thumb. And then what I'm going to do is just twist it around a little bit more so that we've got some more area to work with. And then once again, exactly the same procedure as before, I take this one here, this lead here, the left hand lead goes under the right hand lead. So take it under like so, and then there we go. So I've got it, it's going underneath like so. And the next thing I'm going to do is just put my finger through that right hand gap bit there and take the working end again and pass it through that loop or hole that we made there. So pass that all through, like so. There we go. And then once again, just let me turn that a bit. Once again, you can see where I've passed through, I've got a natural crossing point just here. And where there's a natural crossing point, we basically go over that one there and under that one there. You don't know how sore my hand is trying to show you this. But hey -oh, perks of being a film star, isn't it? If only the money was as good. Right, so we've gone over, under, like so. And once again, just take it round your thumb, out of the way. It just keeps it out of the way. And then once again, we're at this point here. And what I'm going to do is we're almost at the beginning again. What I'm going to do is just one more tuck like so. So we bring the, so let me show you that again. Take the left one, pass it underneath the right one, form a hole like so. And then once we've got that hole, we take our working end and pass it through that hole like so. And a bit fiddly when you get to that last one. There we go, passed it through. Okay, and we're now at the final bit. And you can see here, if I just turn it back, we've got a lovely braid or Turk's head appearing on our hand here. And so now we're at this point here, I can let go because the work is now all locked in place. But like before, remember like before, where there was a natural crossing point, we went over and under. And you can see where we are going over and under, we are actually meeting up with our original lead at this point here. So if I go over this one, under that one, you can see here now, I'm back at the very beginning. Okay, and that's it. End of exercise, as they say. Right, let me just pull that through get the kinks and twists out of it. And then now what you can do is just go round and just make sure it's all fairly even at that point, okay? And also at this point, what you would do is just give it a bit of stretch and then just test it to make sure that you can still, yeah, it's gonna fit over. You can, you can feel if it's gonna fit over the back of your hand. So yeah, that's gonna fit over the back of my hand. And so the next bit now, this is, we've done the hard bit. This is the easy bit. So where this now comes through, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually double up on all those leads there. And all we do is basically, so this one's going there, we're following the one next to it. So this one's going through there like that. Just pull it through 
like so. Try not to rush it too much because sometimes you get kinks in it. Take all the kinks out and then basically all we're doing is running parallel to the left hand one. So the left hand one's going around there underneath that one. So we're going to do exactly the same. But don't allow them to cross because otherwise it looks ugly. U-G-L-E. Ugly. If only that was the way to spell it. Right. So there we go. And you can see now I'm doubling up. So what I'm going to do now is... You can have a cup of coffee. No, you can't. You'll carry on watching. I'll have a sip of coffee because I like my coffee when I'm doing this. And I'll also work my way around till I get to back to the beginning again and we can go on to the next bit. OK, so I'll see you in a second. And so as you can see, I've now come back to the beginning. I've got two strands there and then suddenly we're going on to three strands there if I go round anymore. So I could, if I wanted to, I could actually go round for a third time but I don't have enough cordage here now I've only got a little bit left there but we could if we wanted to finish here now basically cut these ends off tuck them underneath and then I personally don't like gluing or melting so I would probably use common whipping and I'll put a link into the common common whipping section on there but I would actually join them together by putting a little bit of whipping on or even sew them together is another thing just put a couple of stitches in there just to sew those leads together but that is a two pass one and you can see here quite a nice decorative little um, bracelet here but if I wanted to I could still continue round and follow those two this time so if I just do one just to show you I could go round again and I could follow those two and in the end we would get three turns or three lead three runs on our bracelet here but I'm not going to do that what I'm going to do what I thought I'd do was I would get a different colored piece of paracord and weave it in the middle just to get a different effect on this so your choice is here now now that you've actually done three rounds on here sorry two rounds you've done two runs on here you could if you wanted to finish that off and that's just a small delicate little turk's head bracelet or you can go a little bit further and weave another color in there so what i will do is i will um cut the correct length to go round and then i'll show you what i do next to give it a three color um run on here okay so back in a second right so what i've done is i have got my gray this is gray paracord here i don't know what it looks like on the film um but the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go along so let's see i've gone along, i did a third pass there i'll just take that one out because we don't want to show that here so basically as you can see here I'm back at the beginning here so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my grey lead and I'm going to pass it in between the very first lead and the second one that I did so we end up with a nice grey line running through there I'm not sure you like grey but grey is what I've got today okay and once again if you like this video please give me a thumbs up if you don't like it please give me a thumbs down and hey leave a comment I always answer comments until I'm very famous then I'll get my secretary to do it right so as you can see now I have now passed my lead my gray lead between those two colors there so let's let's do that again because I was talking at the time so if I take it out there's my very starting lead that was my first lead that I started with so what I'm going to do now is just go in and I'm going to separate the two pink leads with a little bit of grey so I'm going to pass it all the way through except for the very last bit because I want to keep that left over right and then that's all it is now all we're doing is following in between the two pink lines there so just take it through and pass it through so let me just take that through and then what you'll have to do as you're going along is just gently tease them apart and allow the grey one to come in between them okay so what I'm going to do is I will go all the way around and then I'll come back to the final bit with you and show you that and there we have it this is now gone all the way around finished object and it's basically an endless Turk's head the only thing you need to do now is just go around and tease in 
all the chords just to make sure they're running parallel with each other and you end up with yourself, you end up with a nice, beautiful little Turk's Head bracelet. And so, you know, a great gift. And it doesn't necessarily have to be made out of um, paracord as such. I mean, here's one that I'm still doing, which is just using um, a cotton. Three passes in white cotton. And, you know, it's, a, it's a, just a nice little bracelet. So, yeah, very easy to do. And don't forget, when you finish it, you can, here's the ends inside here. You can, I'm not sure if I can get that for the camera, but the ends are just tucked inside there. What you can do is you can put some soft glue on them to keep them in place. Or like I said, what I would do is if I was actually making these um, to give away or sell, I would actually stitch them together to prevent them coming undone. The other thing you could do as well is just put a mild um, solution of the finishing solution that I keep talking about and I'll put a link in the end of the video as well with regards to the finishing solution. So yeah, there you have it. It's a lovely Turk's head bracelet. No clips, nothing. It's just so easy to make and you can just knock them out in very fast time. And so there it is, Turk's head bracelet. Okay, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please thumbs up. If you didn't, please thumbs down, but tell me why. I need to know why and I'll answer you and tell you what's wrong with me. <laughs> okay, see you later then. Bye-bye.